Hello, welcome to this week's video. I'm Rock and today I'm going to show you a few different ways on how to plan a route on Komoot. If you watched last week's video, then you'll know that, uh, or you might have heard that we were talking about Komoot. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use it today. I'm here on the home page of Komoot and to start planning a route, just click on Route Planner in the top left corner. So here is the first way to plan a route on Komoot. Go to the box that says Enter Starting Point and type in where you want to start. In this example, I'm just going to type in Derby so it finds Derby on the map and marks it with the letter A. Then go to the Enter Destination box, click, and then I'm typing in Nottingham and press Set as Destination. If you zoom in, you can see where Komoot has suggested some options of possible routes. So I'm going to click on the mountain biking route and take a look at it. The circles with red dots show points of interest, which I'll tell you more about later, but this one has caught my eye, as it says burn burner. If I click on it, it brings up photos and information, and I quite fancy going there, so I'm going to include this on my route. On the left is included the burn burner on the list with my start and end destination. Under the sport option, there are different types of cycling, as well as running, walking or mountaineering. Choosing your sport gives Komoot more information about the route you want to find, so for example, on or off road, single track or footpath. You can also choose your fitness level, so the Komoot can estimate how long it will take you to complete your route. Under route type, you can choose one way or round trip. Here at the left, there's information about the type of path and surface. And underneath is an elevation profile. Now, let's have a look in more detail on how to plan a full route. First, just go to the box that says search for place or address and click on it. And then, in this case, type in where you want to start and then it shows you where that place is. If you watched last week's video, you'll know that we did the quarry trail and that's the route I'm planning now. So the start is in Stony Middleton on the Dale. It's a little lay-by cum car park. I'm just looking for it now. Oh, there it is. So when you've found the place you want to start, just click there and then two options will come up. Set as destination and start here. We want to start here. So we got this route from a book and now it tells us to head to Calver Crossroads. Here we are at Calver Crossroads. Again, just click on the junction and click on set as destination. As you can see, there's some information that's appeared. Down on the bottom is elevation, which tells you the elevation above sea level, the incline and surface type of the segment you've got on your route. As you add to your route, the elevation information will be included in this section. Over on the left hand side panel, it shows you the way types and surfaces in more detail. It tells you the percentage and distance of each surface and way type that is on your route.
up in this box, it shows you the time of the route so far, which is based on your fitness level that you specified at the start. It also shows the distance and feet climbed and descended. We are going to turn off the road onto a single track, so if you click on the junction, two options appear. These two options will come up every time you click from now on. I clicked on include on route, but I've since learnt that it is probably better to use set as new endpoint because if you go near a section you've already plotted, it can upset the route, but you can have a play around yourself with it and see which way you prefer. When I hovered over this red circle, this part of the trail turned red, which shows that this section has been mapped by another commute user. One of the commute users has obviously visited EMT rooms. In the book, the route goes down the Lidge Gate and onto Mill Lane to take you back to the start. But I saw a part that looked quite fun, called Super Fun Rocky and Rooty Descent, that a commute user had already mapped. So we made our way there, which then took us to another section I found, called Loose and Wild. If you watched last week's video, this is where you see me fall off. Again, I hover over the route, which is red, and click Include on Route. This is where I discovered it's better to use Set as Endpoint, because as you can see, when I clicked Include on Route, my blue line started jumping about, so I just tried clicking on Set as Endpoint, and it worked. Once you've completed plotting your route, you might see some stars on the elevation. This shows where the points of interest are for your route. Just having a quick look at the elevation profile. Here is the steepest climb of the route at 17% and there's a 30% descent. Once you've finished, go to Save Tour. This box comes up and you can edit your route name here and invite friends to come on your ride by sending them a link. I'm going to rename it Quarry Trail. It will then bring up photographs that other commute users have taken of the points of interest which are included on your route and it also tells you at what distance you will come to them. You can scroll down and have a look at your map, elevation profile, surfaces and way types and it gives you some extra tips and the weather forecast for the following few days. I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, smash the thumbs up. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And if you missed last week's video, then click up here where you'll be able to see us ride the quarry trail. Uh, and if you fancy riding the quarry trail, then the link will be in the description of that video. And remember, Mountain biking makes the world go round. See you next time.